Um, okay, we got another question here that has to do with a band that's on, on tour. So let me show you that one here. Okay. Um, this is a question from uh, Aris Moosin, who says, Hey, Ramman, you gave my daughter's band, Good English, some great advice about nine months ago. You told them to get involved. Get that folks on the phone there, Ab. Uh, you told them to get involved with one of these industry cities, ASP. They did. They've gotten some good attention and made some solid industry contacts in Nashville. And now they're about to head out for a one-month tour from Dayton, Ohio, I guess hometown, to L.A. and back. They're playing the Viper Room on October 7th and Nonplus Ultra on the 8th. They are hitting 24 cities out and back. They booked their tour without any outside help. They got solid demos, released an album in hand. Any advice on good people to contact when they get to town, okay? Um, of course I have some advice. That's what this show is. It's Ask Renman. Um, first off, though, I have to say that I am freaking duly impressed with the fact that this band has put together another tour of 24 cities across America without an, in any help. And, and in fact, I'm so impressed by these folks. They're called Good English. There they are. That we actually tracked them down this morning, got in touch with their mom, and got a phone number. And I want to talk to them a little bit. Are you there, Elizabeth? Hi, how are you? Oh, there she is. There's Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth, Hello. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join me here today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Let me put your little lower third in there like a real professional. Um, First off, I'm looking at this picture of three beautiful young women. There are two blondes and a brunette. Which one are you, Elizabeth? I'm the brunette. I just knew it. I just knew that. Did you? All right. <laughs> Great. Uh, I'll skip all my preference for brunettes there. Not to, are those your sisters or just bandmates behind you? Those are my two sisters and bandmates. All right, so it's a whole family affair. Wow. Great stuff. It's a family um, affair. <laughs> I understand you're coming out to L.A., and, uh, and I want to give you some advice on that. But first, I wanted to talk to you because I really am so impressed that you managed to book 24 city tour across America. I presume you do not have a record label. Is that correct? That's correct. Or you're we an are indie 100 label. DIY. You, you don't have an agent? Nope. Do you have a manager? You could say we maybe have a momager, okay. but no, we're, we're, we're doing okay. this all on our own. I know your mom's probably watching, but mom, don't hate me, but that doesn't count. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> momager, that'll be a problem, trust me, at some point. Um, tell me a little bit about the band here real quick. Briefly, though, Elizabeth. Yeah, sure. So we're just a three-sister um, rock band. We just call ourselves Straight Up Rock and Roll. We're from Dayton, Ohio, and we've been we've been playing together um, as a band for about seven years. But we've been playing together ever since we started playing our instruments about uh, ten years ago. And um, for the first four and a half years of the band, we did have a fourth member, but uh, she went away to college. She was a friend, and when she left, we just decided that let's become a three-piece and try and really do this. So, um, so we all decided for the past year or so to kind of kind of take a gap year from from sort of the normal societal um, realities of jobs, school, et cetera. So yeah, that real um, world we're just stuff. kind of doing this full time. All the that, real world stuff, all exactly. That real world stuff. <laughs> all right, let me ask you a question here again. And uh, when, you're, when you're trying to plan a tour, so many people think it's impossible. So the reason I call it is because I wanted to, to give evidence to all the folks out there that mistake, you know, this is tough with this is impossible. It's, it's tough, it's not impossible. Um, Real quickly, exactly. give me some some idea how you managed to book those twenty four four dates. Sure, I mean the the two ways we mainly did it. Um, the first one was just using the resources we already have from shows we've already played. We went on tour back in March, and so we're going back to some of the cities we've already been. So we just put up. Um, a lot of the bands we'd already played with, or the venues we played, and just got in contact with them. And um, I mean, we were fortunate, I guess, to have made a good enough impact that a lot of most of these places invited us back, or we had our name in the town, so people had heard about that, and they were just more willing to um, give us a chance. So that was sort of the first way we went about it. In the cities we had never been to, or we didn't know anyone there. We went to um, the website IndieOnTheMove.com, which is an amazing resource for bands who are looking to get out there. I love tour. that site. It has, it's, oh, it's so wonderful. And um, 
we primarily use the music venue um, directory, and it's just you just click on a city um, or which state you're going to, which city, and it shows the list of pretty much all the venues in town, and they're usually ranked with um, you know number one being the highest highest rated place. Um, but they show you everything from capacity to what kind of um, what kind of genres of music to is it all ages? Is it 18 and up? Is it 21 yeah. and up? It's and then we just usually um, figure out which venue fits us best okay. and look at their calendar. And we usually end up contacting both um, the venue to say, hey, we're coming through. We notice the state is available. Can we book a show? And then one of the things we found really helpful is going to their calendar and looking at the other bands who have played there um, in the past. They're usually like a couple months out. And then we just go to Facebook and research these bands and see, okay, are they actually from this city? If they are, cool, will they match with our sound? And if all those little things line up, then we send them a direct message, usually on Facebook or in an email. And um, we, we just try and kind of piece everything together that way. And it's, it's worked out so well. Um, okay. So that's really how we've done it. Now, for you folks that, that are watching the show today, if you go into our player again, let me show you. If you go over here in this little videos, uh, actually, that's the wrong one. Um, let me get you there. Right here, watch these. You'll see in there, there is a, uh, we got a link to uh, an interview we did recently with Kyle Weber, who, who runs that wonderful site, Indie on the Move. And I'm so stoked to hear that you ladies are, are finding some <laughs> some value in that because it really is oh, a, a, a great resource. Um, you mentioned something else a little bit earlier that I want to pick up on, and then I want to give you some advice and answer your question so I can get out of here on time today. Um, <laughs> sure. You, we talked a little bit earlier. You said that you've managed to make friends with lots of bands, right? Mm -hmm. How yeah. has that helped you get shows, Elizabeth? Well, I mean, you know, most people, they want to... They just want to be your friend. I mean, I think you see that in any. I imagine any they want to be the of friend life. of you three. Maybe not everybody. <laughs> right, right. But um, I mean, a lot of bands are really into show swaps because you know bands they want to get out there. They want to go to other cities. And so if you're open to saying, "Hey, get us a show in your city, and we'll bring you to our city," bands are so open to doing that. We've done that with so many bands already. It, it can be a little harder if you're going across the country. But, but, you know, people are trying to come back the other way across the country, and they're sure enough probably going to stop through Dayton, Ohio. And so it just, it just really makes the network that much bigger. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's been so beneficial for us. And then, you know, they let you sleep on their couch. Oh, or God, they yeah. Hook you up with just you anything. You know what? It's it's, really uh, great. When people ask me all the time, it's, uh, it, it's that we call it FOB here in the office, friend of band, right? Which mm -hmm. is there's yeah. all kinds of rules that apply when it comes to getting gigs and the like, uh, but you can throw them all out the window if you are FOB friend of band. You, there's always an extra ticket at a show if you are FOB right. friend of band. All right, now let me answer your question. Great stuff, by the way, Liz. I can tell that you're cool. kind of the quasi manager inside the group. You. Ladies sound very freaking together, I got to say. Oh. Um, yeah. It's how you have to do it. You have to be on top of it, really. You really do. I mean, I, I, we, we talk about it a lot, this whole idea of dreaming about doing something big, which is easy. You know, it, it, it seems mm -hmm. like that's why they call them dreams and not nightmares, right? They typically work out in your head. It's the freaking doing <laughs> that's where exactly. all the dirty, ugly stuff is. And so that really is something that separates... Um, the wannabes from the ones that actually have a shot.